Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net. Thanks again for watching on Wednesday the 12th of November. Don't forget you can subscribe to us on YouTube so you get notification of when these videos are updated and of course you can watch all the videos through weatherweb.net. Now, uh, before we start, most of you who've watched before know, and there are many thousands of you, know that uh, we're not taken here at weatherweb.net to make wild forecasts and wild claims. We do it by science. We back up what we're saying with science and we show you through the models, we show you through the analogues and we try to give you a good conclusion as to how we've managed to come to the story that we've reached. So, before we go any further, I need you to promise me one thing. You're not going to run off after this saying, Simon Keeling says it's snowmageddon on the way. Okay, because I'm just showing you here something that's cropped up that I want you to have a look at and I want you to see how our thoughts are starting to slot into place now. So this is by no means a forecast, I'm just showing you the information that we've got here and that we've been telling private clients about, but I'd like to get it out to you as soon as I possibly can here at weatherweb.net. If you want to find out about becoming a private client, then get in touch with us using the contact form at the top of the screen here. And very, very soon, you'll be able to access weatherweb.net premium as well. So you'll be able to subscribe and get the information first. If you want information on that, send me an email, simon at weatherweb.net, or use the contact form at the top of the page. Okay, so this is the story that uh, came out of the Daily Express. Who else? Uh, earlier on today. Polar vortex warning the latest winter weather models show the UK faces months of heavy snow. Well, it just makes my blood boil because uh, oh, polar vortex, look, the polar vortex is always there. Thank goodness. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. It's the circulation around the pole. That's what it is. And there's the equivalent in the southern hemisphere as well. What happens is that the polar vortex uh, kind of meanders like that around the pole. So you get these sort of lobes forming on it. And it's when one of these lobes breaks off and heads south that um, you can get a situation of uh, pretty cold weather. So please don't run away with the idea of talking about the polar vortex because it's always there and it always will be there. It's like talking about the jet stream. The jet stream's there and it's a, a very important part of our weather. So taking that into account, and this broadcast, believe me, is in no way any justification of anything that's in the Daily Express there because you know my thoughts on that. This is the 500 millibar analysis from the GFS uh, ensemble from this morning. Now, states are underneath here. Look, just to give you some orientation, British Isles are underneath here. Okay, you've got that. Now, watch what happens over the next few days. As I run this sequence, just watch the area over the United States, okay? Watch what happens to the colours there. Notice those purple colours. Notice two, trough here, trough here, ridge here, and a ridge there. And then as we continue, You'll notice there, look, that deep impact of cold air getting into the states, that trough really developing across the US and across those northern parts of Russia. And you notice, look, by the time we're getting through to the 19th, so this is up to uh, next Wednesday, still got the idea of the uh, trough out towards here, trough here, ridge here, ridge here. Okay, so very little changes on that uh, set of charts. And as we go forwards, you notice as well, look, there's just nothing there. We get those troughs in place and they start to kind of dumbbell around. Um, and even at 240 hours, 20 second, very similar pattern developing there. So that's the first stage. Now, take a look at this. Let's just go back one chart. So this is the 10 HPA temperature analysis. This is now looking in the stratosphere, where we're looking at the top levels of the atmosphere. And uh, this is temperature, okay? And you notice here, look, this cold area here across the pole, exactly what you would expect to see. Now then, let me show you something. This is what happens in 10 days time. Just take a look at this. Look at that there, okay? This here is an area of warming in the stratosphere. Notice this cold area here getting pushed off the pole down into the area of Greenland and north of Iceland as well. Notice that area getting pushed away as this warming takes place. Now this is a key map and I'll show you why. Because this map bears a lot, a lot of resemblance to a map that was earlier uh, a couple of years ago. Let me show you 
what I mean. So this is the um, 10 millibar air temperature from the 20th of November 2009 to the 10th of December 2009, okay? And just look at this, okay? Look at the temperatures that we have here, okay? So let me just get that back up for you. Just look at the temperatures that we have on this section of the chart. The warming that's taken place here, okay? Look at that warming there, look at the cooling there. So this was the period running from, just to remind ourselves, this is the period running from the 20th of November through to the 10th of December 2009, okay? This is what happened after. So this is what then happened during the period from <coughs> the 10th of December through to the 10th of January 2009. And look, we get a 10th of uh, December 2009 through to the 10th of January 2010. Warming here, and we've got this cold pool here. Okay, so that cold area has slipped off the pole. Ring any bells? Does that look familiar with what we're looking at here? Okay, so look at those two there. Okay, there's the warmth, there is the cold in virtually exactly the same place. Now, just look what happened to winter temperatures. This is winter from the Met Office. Uh, it's temperatures through December. And you notice what happened, look, temperatures fell off. Remember 2009, we went into this very cold December and early part of January, recovering middle part of January, then going cold through December once again. So we've got these sort of pointers that are pointing towards, if you took that on face value, of cold, weather ahead. Now generally, once you've got stratospheric warming event taking place, such as um, is being shown here, generally it takes about 14 days to three weeks to get through the system. So assuming that that's 10 days time, so that's the 22nd, what you're generally going to be looking at is the early part of December, perhaps going up to around the 10th, to look for this cooling coming off. Now something else that I looked at, sea surface temperature anomalies. This is 2009. So this is the 12th of November 2009. Note the cool area here in the Atlantic and the warm seas around the British Isles. Also notice the El Nino event taking place here. Now look at um, the 11th of, uh, sorry the 10th of November, so a couple of days ago El Nino event. Cool water here in the Atlantic, warm water around the British Isles. Bit of a difference that the Mediterranean is certainly warmer uh, than it was back in 2009. But also notice this warm area of water here off uh, southeastern South America. Okay, spot that one and look at the similarities with this year. There, there is that warm water. And also another similarity to notice here is the area of cold water here off western parts of South America. And there it is bit more extended, but it's definitely, it's definitely there. And also notice warmer than, warm, warmer than normal temperatures out here, west of Australia. And look, there they are again. And then just to add on to that, if we look at the QBO, so this is quasi by quasi biennial oscillation. This is a measure of the winds high in the atmosphere. This is from the University of Berlin. And when we go into um, the gray area on these charts, that's when we get cooled conditions. This here is January 2010. So we go in December into January 2010. And you notice here, look, this cool area of gray. Well, this is now. And just look, there's the cool area of gray. And you would expect to see a fall off that pattern going down something like that pretty well as it did in 2010. So, uh, what do we draw from that? Well, I think the, the, the big signal here is that event taking place. I think the other big signal is that's what happened in 2010 when the same event took place, and that's what followed. So, what we've gotta be watching 
from now on, I think for, for a while, particularly given that, given that temperature forecast from the CFS, the Japanese Met Agency come out with their predictions over the next uh, few days. So we'll be watching those very carefully. But what we have to watch for is the possibility of some cold weather and some very cold weather developing during the next two, three, four weeks. Now, if I've got to put a percentage chance on it, I'd probably go for around 30% probability. It's at that sort of level. It may even be a little bit less than that, but that's the sort of probability that I would be going for at this stage. And as you can hear there, the weather wolf agrees with me. So, as I say, don't go running away saying, Simon says it's gonna be bitterly cold. That's not what I want you to do. I'm trying to show you how we're building our story here and to get you to understand what we're looking at so you can start to make some comparisons yourself. But please don't get running away with some of the winter headlines that you're going to see. Um, but we seem to be lining up here for some sort of event possibly, possibly to be taking place. There are 101 different pieces of the jigsaw that need to fall into place. Any one of those out of the way, we stay with the mild conditions. And that indeed is how many forecasts, longer range forecasts look through December, just staying with the mild southwesterly. But the thing is, we've started to pick up now by looking at years past and looking at events that are expected over the next few days, um, as if we could go into a hit of winter early in December. But as I say, Please don't quote me on this just yet. So I'll leave you with that for now. Um, hopefully that's some use, use for you. I know it's a bit of a long one, but I wanted to go through all the charts with you and show uh, what we're thinking at the moment. So uh, for now, whatever you're doing, thanks again for watching weatherweb.net. Don't forget you can subscribe to us on YouTube or watch us through the website. We'll have more for you over the next few days. And of course, as you know, we update these look ahead videos every single day and we add to our video repertoire as well on YouTube throughout as well. So whatever you do, have a fantastic day. Thanks again for watching and keep the sun shining. Bye for now.